what I do is um, I train drivers um, to drive at um, a high performance level. So these are people who perhaps have an ambition to race or perhaps are already racing. Um, it comes about because I have a racing background and that's a necessity because I have to be licensed to do the job. Um, I also have to pass medicals and various things like that because um, people's lives are in my hands. So I was invited to do the job and that's how it usually happens that um, you're perhaps um, testing a car or something like that. And I was at Goodwood one day and the circuit manager said we could do with more help. Would you be prepared to get um, an instructor license, which is effectively a coaching license? And I started working for them, which I did for two or three years, and then um, decided that I didn't want to spend the whole of my life there and branched out to do it on my own. By that time, I met a number of people who, uh, these are probably race drivers, who wanted me to work with them. So each year, I probably work on a one-to-one -one basis with half a dozen race drivers, and I work with them throughout the season so that if they have a dozen more or less races planned, we go to the, the circuits, the tracks, the venues where they're going to race, and we spend time together on track. And where possible, depending what type of car it is, I sit in the car with them on the circuit and drive mm. around, uh, sit, sit with them while they're driving around so that I can see what they're doing. Um, Sometimes that isn't possible because um, the car doesn't have a, a second seat or it's a single seater. And then we use quite a lot of data. And in the high tech world we, we live in now, it's very easy to put, they call it telemetry um, in the trade. I don't know exactly what that means. I just know how it works. <laughs> they put a unit in the car and it reads everything back to the pits where you can see it on a screen. You can see exactly what the driver's doing. I mean, you've watched the driver, obviously, because he's, he's got video and so on. But um, you're also looking at a very big screen with a large graph on it. And the graph is live. It rises and falls. And you can see when the, what the driver's doing when he's accelerating, when he's braking, how long he's braking, how long he's accelerating, what speed he's doing. Um, and from that, we can later sit down and analyze where he's losing or gaining time or where he could gain time. Uh -huh. So that's pretty much how it works. And so what, what kind of skills or uh, per personality do you need to be good at your job? It's teaching and uh -huh. all of the skills that you, you need for teaching. Um, you do need quite good interpersonal skills because um, you need to be very calm. You have to be able to support people um, when they're doing something that um, perhaps uh, is new, um, mm -hmm. perhaps it's dangerous, perhaps it's stressful. And I guess it's usually one or all of those. And um, so it does, it does require you to be fairly calm, but um, also, perhaps not in the car, but out of the car later on. Um, fairly firm with them about what we do need to do, because one of the things that you encounter early on, and I think this happens in a lot of sports scenarios, particularly, and I've seen it with other things that I've done, like golf and tennis and so on. Um, people have in their head the concept of how it works Mm -hmm. and how they do it and how they should do it. And they may be quite reluctant to leave go of that. Mm -hmm. And they might be listening to what you're saying, but not doing what you're asking them to do. 